A reading from the book of Exodus. The children of Israel set out from Elim and came into the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departure from the land of Egypt. Here in the desert, the whole assembly of the children of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The children of Israel said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, however, when they prepare what they bring in, let it be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the whole congregation of the children of Israel, present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard their grumbling. Then Aaron announced this to the whole assembly of the children of Israel. They turned toward the desert, and lo, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the grumbling of the children of Israel. Tell them, In the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning they shall have their fill of bread, so that they may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the children of Israel asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Verum Domini. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. They tempted God in their hearts by demanding the food they craved. Yes, they spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the desert? The Lord gave the bread from heaven. Yet he commanded the skies above, and the doors of heaven he opened. He, remain, he rained manna upon them for food, and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave the bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels, food he sent them in abundance. He stirred up the east wind in the heavens, and by his power brought on the south wind. The Lord gave the bread from heaven. And he rained meat upon them like dust, and like the sand of the sea, winged fowl, which fell in the midst of their camp, around about their tents. The Lord gave the bread from Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. Gloria 
On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears, ought to hear. Verbum Domini. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you will have understood by now that I am not one of the Franciscan friars here. I am a visitor from Europe. I'm an auxiliary bishop in the Diocese of Sertogenbosch in the Netherlands, and very happy to be here. My name is Bishop Jan Liesen. In today's reading of the Gospel, we hear that a large crowd of people gathered around Jesus. In fact, there were so many people, there was no place for him left. So he went out on the lake and sat down in a boat. This situation tells us something. It tells us what is going on because in antiquity, if you saw at some distance a group of people standing and there was just one person sitting, you would know just by looking at it what was going on. Without even hearing what they were saying, you would know there was a teacher and his disciples. That was the typical situation. The teacher would sit down the disciples would stand around and listen. In a typical school situation today, it's just the other way around. Disciples sit and take notes. It's the teacher who stands and explains something. But when we hear that, that Jesus sits and the crowd stands, it becomes immediately clear for us that there is teaching by Jesus here in the Gospel. And that means, first of all, that we are to understand something. Our minds are being addressed. And then, of course, also the heart, that we really want what he teaches us. But the first thing is that we listen. We do not need to take notes, but we have to listen carefully, as Jesus says, Whoever has ears ought to hear. What is the teaching of Jesus about? What are we to understand? There is a hint of what he is teaching already in that situation. In the parable, seed falls on different types of soil. And the seed is an image of the words that Jesus speaks to the people. And the different types of soil are an image for the different ways in which people receive the word of Jesus. But the crowd is standing on land. 
and Jesus is on the water. So that position makes it clear that what he is saying applies to them. They are, so to say, on the soil. He speaks to them, but he also speaks about them. There is something that they have to understand about themselves. When Jesus speaks this parable of the sower and the seed, he is not giving some theory on agriculture. No. He speaks of the reality of their lives, there and then, in that situation. In fact, this is so important that the, the fruitfulness of their lives depends on what he is saying. It would not be too much to say that the whole parable of the sower is an expression of this deep desire of Jesus to be heard, to be received. He knows that everything depends on how we listen, how we respond to the word of God. So this is the first and foremost thing we are to understand. As we, you and I, and everyone who listens to this broadcast, as we hear the gospel, we are not just hearing something that was said 2,000 years ago. We are being addressed right now, here. Whenever this parable is being read, it becomes reality. It happens as we speak and listen. It not only speaks to us, it speaks about us, about how we are listening now. This parable truly is a word of God. It creates its own actuality. God's words are always like that. God's words are always fresh and new. What we call new, like today's newspaper, that's old by tomorrow. But the word of God is always fresh and new. It happens while we listen. You can verify that in every page of scripture. Look on the first page. God said, let there be light, and there was light. The word of God creates its own actuality. And the reason is, of course, that the word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. When we hear these words, God speaks to us. Yes, in a human style, but this word puts us in direct contact with God. And as we listen, a response is required from us. This word makes us responsible. As a matter of fact, you and I do not have a choice in this matter. Whether we like it or not, whatever we choose to do after hearing this gospel, that will be our answer. There is no possibility not to answer. And that is what we are to understand. That is what is so important. We all love freedom. We love to make our own choices. But there is a limit to that. Many of us do not like to hear that, but this is the reality of our human lives. We are not absolute beings. We did not will ourselves into existence. We are not the masters of our lives in absolute freedom. And it's necessary to be clear about that because our future depends on it. The fruitfulness of our lives depend on how we listen to God. Because the way we listen, the way we receive it, determines how we will respond to him. God 
in his freedom, in his love, has chosen to reveal himself to us. God did not send a letter to the world saying, I will let my son become human in about two weeks. Is that okay with you? God did not do, did not do that. In the fullness of time, the Son of God became man. God did that in his freedom. Our freedom does not come in there. Our freedom comes after that. The Son of God has become man and he speaks to us. And now it is up to us in our relative freedom to respond to this self-revelation of God, to the word of God made flesh. Let us not be mistaken about this. Our freedom is limited. We can choose to give whatever response we like to God, but we do not have the freedom not to give an answer. Whatever we choose to do, even if we choose to ignore him, that will be our response. That is so important, and that is what Jesus is teaching to them. There is nothing more important in our lives than listening to the word of God. Whatever we do after that is our answer to God. This is what makes the parable of the sower so serious. Yes, we are free to choose how we receive this word, free to choose what type of soil we are, but we are not free not to choose. Ignoring the gospel would be, like, would be like letting the word of God fall on the path where it is exposed and gets eaten. But that is our choice. Saying, hey, this sounds interesting. I will come back to it later. That is like letting the seed of the gospel fall among thorns. It will be choked between many other things that we choose to give our time to. Postponement is our choice and is not a good choice. Or we may respond to the gospel with enthusiasm for a moment, but then abandon it when the routine of daily life kicks in. That is as if receiving the seed on rocky ground with little soil, but that is our choice. Or we can decide here and now to listen to these words of God and to take them to heart and to start to respond immediately and to remove the obstacles that would keep us from acting upon them. That can be our choice. That would be like letting the seed fall on rich soil and there it will bear much fruit. Dear brothers and sisters, if we take the numbers of the gospel realistically, seriously, it means that three quarters of the seed does not bear fruit. That should, us, that should give us reasons to think. Once we have understood this parable with our mind, we have to will it with our heart. We have to respond and only then will our lives bear fruit. That is what Jesus wants for us. Not just successful lives, but an abundance of life, an abundance that supersedes what is natural. The hundredfold yield that he speaks of hints at eternal life. Now the best setting for this gospel to hear, to be heard, is undoubtedly the Eucharist which we celebrate here. For here we celebrate that he is the vine, we are the branches. 
And this is how our lives become fruitful. When we are connected with him and remain connected with him. On our own, we bear little fruit. But with him, nothing is impossible. Let us listen carefully and let us make the right choice for him. Amen.